What do you like about FanFest? I like it because it's fun and it's and it has a lot of cool stuff. Plus, you can get autographs and free stuff. You can. I don't really know. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Sidewalks. Richard here. Now, every year at the location of the All Star Game, Major League Baseball presents one of the biggest and most extensive conventions of all time for you, the baseball fans. If you love America's favorite pastime, Major League Baseball Fan Fest is definitely the place to be. It's everything baseball. We've got over uh, 300,000 square feet. It's easy as that. It's a baseball theme park, and it's to celebrate All-Star Week. When Fan Fest came to the San Francisco area in 2007, the entire three floors of the Moscone West Convention Center was filled to capacity. Now, this traveling baseball theme park isn't just a little attraction. Oh, no. It's a huge event with anything and everything related to baseball. A little bit of everything. You see a great walk through time, the history of the game with the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum from Cooperstown, New York, as well as interactives, really fans being able to get close to the game with batting cages, pitching cages. They can make their own baseball card. They can get their photo on the cover of a Wheaties box or make the game-saving catch and take that photo home. And uh, just a little bit of everything as well as free autographs and great memorabilia with the collectors and, and uh, all sorts of great all items, all baseball. What do you think? What do you think about Fan Fest? It's great. Um, I love it. What's the best thing you've seen so far? Um, the autograph. Um, everything. It's just really fun. Um, free stuff. My favorite thing about Fan Fest so far has been the expedition on, exhibition on the Negro Leagues. Um, just finding out, particularly about the old teams, and uh, the contribution that they made to the current game is invaluable. So I really appreciate that. And I'm very happy to be taking him here to start. What have you tried so far? Oh, I've tried the home run derby upstairs. I tried stealing home base over there. It's like a little race thing. Oh, I love the environment. You know, I just caught a ball. I have my picture right here. You know what I'm saying? It's right here. I just caught a winning catch. Um, I like the field upstairs, the diamond. You get to play baseball. Well, I'm now I'm on the third floor, so I've, first floor I've seen uh, a lot of autographs being signed. I've seen uh, a lot of sports memorabilia being sold and a lot of uh, sliding, base stealing, batting practice, just overall good baseball time. How did FanFest get started? It started in 1991 uh, in Toronto, the Toronto All-Star Game, and it started as uh, and continues to be a gift back to the host community, the host city, uh, and the fans in the, the surrounding region. It's really a great opportunity for fans to join in the fun and excitement of the All-Star Week and se help celebrate All-Star Week and the game's greatest players because that's what the All-Star Game is all about, bringing together Major League Baseball's greatest players and, and uh, it's a way for fans to get closer to it and really have fun. Oh man, Fan Fest is in such an incredible place. You got everything. Over here, pen over, Justin. We got a Fan Fest fielding practice where kids can learn to catch the ball. Over here, if you can see it over there, we got a batting cages. It's incredible. They built this entire stadium like in the convention center. Some of the most popular attractions to see at Fan Fest are, of course, memorabilia, including one of a kind items that are displayed can be purchased or up for auction. This is the Babe Ruth bat that was used in the 1923 World Series, game number six. Uh, Ruth hit a home run in that game. Uh, it's actually autographed, interestingly, on the back of the, of the barrel to my friend Art Neff from Babe Ruth, October 15, 1923, which dates to that game. And obviously, when you have a specific bat like that signed by the player, it puts it you know, right in, in his hands during that game, which is what made it you know, a multi-hundred thousand dollar piece. Okay, this is the 1958 Willie Mays San Francisco Giants home jersey. 1958 was the first year the Giants, after they had moved from New York out to San Francisco, chain stitched Willie Mays at the bottom of the chain of the uh, tail. And this jersey, like many others that got out into the public's hands, was handed down to a minor league player. Back then, the major league uniforms would be reused for their minor league system. 
So if you got the luck of the draw and got a Willie Mays or Mickey Mantle, then obviously that's how you would get that uniform. Okay, these are a very historic pair of lineup cards. These are the original lineup cards from the inaugural All-Star Game in Major League Baseball history in 1933. They originated from the collection of Hall of Fame manager and coach Bill McKechnie, who was the National League coach during that season for John McGraw. Just incredibly significant if you think back to the fact that these are the actual lineup cards that were exchanged before the first game in history. Being out at the All-Star Game, obviously we want to have something for everybody, you know, not just it's not just a regional event. And this is a great assemblage of Boston Red Sox related pieces that primarily originate from the collection of Smokey Joe Wood, who was a Red Sox Hall of Fame member, and Ted Williams, not from his family, but obviously Ted Williams related pieces. Uh, we've got everything from signed photographs to uniforms, uh, photographs, game use bats, and, and these pieces will range anywhere from several hundred dollars to the uniform. It's a 1955 road uniform to around fifty to seventy five thousand dollars. We always have a good selection of early baseball photography. It's quite popular with collectors because it really captures certain elements and times in baseball history. And we have things such as team photographs in the early 20s, ranging up to original images of Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Tony Lazari, and Connie Mack. All these are in the range of several hundred to several thousand dollars a piece. Charles, tell us a little bit, little bit about your art. Well, I've been doing it now for 24 years. Uh, about 10 years ago, I started doing a lot of my favorite sports. I started uh, working with Major League Baseball, doing some of my favorite teams in New York, and they were really big hits from day one. Everybody loves the, my three-dimensional slant on doing all my artwork. Well, of course, this year um, we're, made, um, we're really showing the All-Star Game piece. It's done as the um, official commemorative poster and the 3D piece. And this year we're, we partnered up with uh, JuniorGiants.org, the, the Giants Fund, and a portion of the proceeds is going to it. So that is my favorite this year. And everybody from San Francisco really, really loves the piece. Well, we have, we have items from 1887 right up to 2007. But the most popular item is anything with Barry Bonds' picture on it. It's amazing how much Bonds we're selling. We're selling an awful lot of Lincecum cards. We're selling an awful lot of um, Houston Street. We're selling an awful lot of old cards, cards that are 50, 60, 70 years old. Giants fans, this is what a real World Series title looks like. A's have four. You guys don't have any, so just take a look. So, if you want to try to step up to the plate against a major league pitcher, learn to exercise just like the pros, learn a game of baseball from real major league baseball players, coaches, managers, and umpires, get an all-star shave, or just announce a game like a major league broadcaster. FanFest is for you.